Today we want to introduce you to our scientific work on protein research, proteomics. In agriculture, there are often problems with pathogens like fungi. Here you can see rapeseed plants, Brassica napos. These plants look quite healthy. But when they get infected, their growth is stunted. This leads to reduction in farmers' incomes. This can be an economic problem. This is the reason why we are studying fungal virulence mechanisms. For propagation by seed, a one-to-one -one mixture out of soil and sand is needed. For this, some soil is scattered first. Then an equal volume of sand is added. These compounds are combined up to the final potting compost. The potting compost is filled into seed trays, watered, and treated with insecticide. Finally, the seedling can be planted gently into the potting compost. Under greenhouse conditions, the seedlings need about four weeks until they are ready for harvesting. One of these fungi is called Verticillium longisporum. This pathogen is our central research object. We want to know what are the factors steering fungal development in general and, in particular, upon the entry and once inside of plants. Verticillium is a vascular pathogen. It can be found in plant xylem vessels, which hold liquid. For our experiments, we cut off the stalk and collect the liquid, which is transported upward from root to flower, which is called xylem sap. The fungal infection is spread out in the flow direction. The xylem liquid sample is put into a shaking flask where the fungus can grow. For comparative control, the fungus is transferred into a lab medium. In general, the fungus takes one to two weeks to grow. After the fungal cells have been cultivated, their proteins are isolated. For this, cells are centrifuged to build a pellet. Their envelope has to be disrupted to release their intercellular proteins. The centrifuge cell material is put into aluminum foil and shock frosted. The cells are then transferred into a metal cylinder containing a metal ball. The cylinder's function is comparable to that of a mortar and pestle when it is attached to the shaking machine. In addition to that of an intracellular proteome, we isolate proteins that are active on the surface or outside the fungus. This fractioning reveals the exoproteome containing many potential virulence factors or effectors. For this process, we use the supernatant of the cell centrifugation. For further processing, proteins in the supernatant are precipitated overnight and subsequently centrifuged. The result is a protein pellet which can be found on the bottom of the tube. After fungal proteins are isolated, we use two different methods to continue the procedure. Our standard procedure is to transfer the proteins onto a one-dimensional SDS gel and to separate them by using an electrical field. This separates them in the sieve-like structure of the gel by their size. We use a colored marker like bromophenol blue to make the protein bands that form visible. The second method starts with the first one-dimensional separation, called isoelectric focusing. For this, we use an immobilized pH gradient gel, IPG. The IPG strip is put into a case, which is then filled up with mineral oil. We close the case and transfer it to the IPG phoresis machine. 
This approach separates proteins by their different isoelectric points. As preparation for the second one-dimensional separation, the IPG strips are colored with bromophenol blue and applied onto an SDS gel. The strips are pushed into the gel and fixed between the glass plates. The SDS gel is then transferred into a gel electrophoretic chamber filled with buffer, and the power is turned on. During this step, the molecules are separated by size in an orientation 90 degrees from the first. This two-step procedure leads to a spot-like distribution of proteins on the final two-dimensional gel. These spots can again be visualized by color markers like Kumasi Brilliant Blue. Quantization of changing protein amounts between different samples are analyzed and visualized by dual-channel imaging. The protein gel images are therefore artificially colored by computer software. In a process called image warping, Spot positions on different gel images are synchronized. Changes in the spot volume now form the basis for quantitative and statistical analysis. To connect protein bands or spots with sequence information, they are cut out of the gel. Proteins in the gel pieces are cut into small peptides by trypsin digestion. The peptide mixtures are stored in dried pellet form for further analysis in a mass spectrometer. After injection of the dissolved peptides into our mass spectrometer, we receive mass lists of complete peptides and their fragmented parts. Using these mass fingerprints, the analytic software can calculate which amino acid sequence best fits the measurement results, so we can identify the proteins that were contained in the gel pieces. Each sample is characterized by a specific proteome pattern. This signature is composed of all proteins that are different in abundance in comparison to control samples. Collecting these signatures in a library-like database, we can compare old signatures with current ones. Even years later, we are able to compare these signatures to get hints about cellular processes involved in as-yet uncharacterized sample conditions. Thereby, we can, for example, analyze which proteins are specific for fungal cells growing in the presence of plant material, in this case, xylem sap. 